Alright, so right now I am using a voice changer, as you could obviously tell. But that's not the thing that we're going to be talking about in this video. Today, we're obviously going to be talking about Jam Construct 13 Beta. I've made a video about this before, but this time it is obviously not gameplay. It is actually reading other people's comments of it, or their discussion comments. In the add-on on Gary's mod, you can go to discussions, and one of them are personal exploration notes. I've wrote in some of them some things, but uh, today I'm going to be reading a user's comments, uh, their own personal exploration notes called The Clown. Uh, all right. And that's all. Make sure to subscribe, like. If you don't like the video, I will kill you, I will assassinate you, and I will destroy you. Alright, let's get into this, obviously. Initial log following advancement to Tier 4. The monk seems to be always present now. The scientist flickers about the map. My scans have seen zombies through the walls, but they disappear almost as soon as they arrive. It's like they're w just waiting to get the jump on me. Haven't gotten me yet, though. I've been strangled multiple times by ropes from the ceilings, but a few warning shots will get the quick release. Met a scrawny chap over by the water. Had a little home there. He fired a warning shot at me as I approached, but I don't think he considered me too much of a threat, as he let me investigate after that. He walked off down the tunnels. Haven't seen him since. Tier 4 seems to be its highest level of activity, though I hesitate to say it's the worst of it. Testing some theories out with a handful of civilians near where the monk usually arrives. I watch the girl jump from the roof again. The phrase, You need me, still concerns me. Perhaps this curse is linked to the mimetic theory of sympathy, the idea of a thing in its association, wrapping back to its properties, a history of being so frequently abandoned, leaving it spiteful, perhaps, or maybe something worse. Regardless, returning back to the darkness, I saw that every citizen was still alive. Oddly enough, after the monk made his departure, they all bolted for the door leading into the tunnels. From there I saw the worst of this place yet, and though I doubt it, the worst I hope to ever see. One was hoisted up into the ceiling. Viscera and gore raining down as his body was pulled into the concrete. Another slowly disappeared, the last of her being a shadow on the wall from my flashlight. Another was burned on the spot. One, however, seemingly withered into a stalker firing that beam at me as I hid behind the beam for cover. Before all at once, he disappeared entirely. This place has the power to render a man into red mist in seconds, but yet it doesn't. Not to me, rather it pokes, prods, and scratches at me. Why? Why is it so willing to rip apart civilians, but not me? Does it want me to watch? Is it trying to impress me? Recent outing was a far cry from the previous interaction. No suicidal girls spawning, no zombies through the walls. Even the scientists only pop his head to see if I was still around a handful of times. Of course, it still played the occasional trick on me, dropping the floor out from under me, possessing an NPC in the dark room to run through the tunnels, stringing me up by a barnacle every so often, but it didn't feel hostile. It was like it was playing with me, like this was just a game between the two of us. What changed? I saw a glimpse of a chair in the dark room, a spotlight shining down on it. 
I can't quite tell what to think of it just yet. But, I hadn't seen this place act as such. I tried to be quick on my feet and thinking quickly. I remembered that odd plush doll hidden in every construct map beneath the ramp. I ran to go get it and brought it in. But the chair was gone before I could set it down there. I very well may be onto something if it was so quick to shy away. The monk took its place. From here on out, I intend to keep that doll in the tunnel out back. If it ever occurs again, I'll be ready. Very rarely does this place offer a question with an answer that fits so well. Though, perhaps I've gone too far in my assumptions. Discovered a few interesting properties of the darkroom just now. While I had seen civilians run off and die violently, I had yet to see anything from other key figures. This place has an odd fascination with Dr. Kleiner and Father Gregory. I have my theories as to why. As well, uh, there is a singular piece of graffiti on the walls of G-Man. I spun the three of them in the dark room and I waited. Father Gregory shot Kleiner in the head after a few moments, and just like that he ran off into the corner of the room. Notably, the corner that the monk stands in. Curious. G-Man, on the other hand, took two shots to the chest and stood still. It's typical for him. However, what I was not expecting from him was to take off into the tunnels. He ran down a path that I had seen Combine take previously and made haste for the mirror room, only to stop in front of that damn graffiti. I didn't expect him to actually have something there for it. He stood there for a while, never moving. Such a specific fascination, and I believe I may have something of an answer, a theory really, but something. The Gregory, Kleiner, Brain, and G-Man all hold some special significance to the original construct. Early g revolved around these four characters. G-Man is a poster child of the old school humor of the game, while Kleiner was almost universally used as a player model. Brain became iconic and much the same was as G-Man there was importance revolved around more so around that type of YouTube proto memes. Gregory's role was always in flux, however, as he was oddly popular as either a punching bag, a roleplay character, or an ominous figure. There was plenty of fun to be had at the fact he resides in the animal section, but regardless, these four characters had extreme importance to the legacy of Construct. A map that had become a welcome map for the game, stepped on, then passed over the moment you entered the threshold. I say this for a reason, of course. The entities of the map tie themselves back to these characters. The scientist and the monk are obvious. The scientist watches from a distance, walking behind a corner or outright vanishing upon getting too close. The monk features prominently in the darkroom as well. And then we come back to the suicidal girl. If you're there with her when she jumps, you can hear Breen's voice saying, You need me. Before you die mere moments after her. It could have used any line. But why that one? You need me. What if it's Construct itself? The concept of it in its entirety. That's why it doesn't kill you. That's why the scientist is always watching. That's why I won't let you block off the darkroom. Call it a curse if you want, but a curse implies that this was done to it. I think it's trying to reach out, trying to make us come back, trying to get our attention. You need me. What if it wants us back? What if it misses the old days? What if it's trying to reach back out to us in the only way it can, spiteful and sparrow? and sorrowful. It needs us, and pleads that we need it all the same. It wants to play a game, so it defines the rules. Only it can place folk in the dark room.
Only it can shine lights in the dark room. We are not allowed to block off the dark room. It's a theory, but there's something here. Something it wants to say. But what? Strangely enough, the mirror room seems almost entirely unaffected by the curse. I half expected to see something behind me, but not once. In fact, an odd assortment of buildings seem to be specifically exempt. The tunnels, the spawn zone, the mirror room, the white room, all of them entirely untouched. Why are the affected zones so specific? Scanning the entities is tricky business, but I've managed to catalog them the best I can. From what I can tell, there are two versions of these scans. One checks for physical, the other for existential. Existential is always present, but physical is a bit more refined. Existential scans should always show an N NPC that is there, as well as their range of sight, category of object, creature, and the like. Physical scans are more finicky. It checks if you're looking at it is real or not. It can be shot, hurt, or even touched. Essentially, it separates ghosts from men. I say this for a few reasons. Firstly, Semper, that statue freak doesn't show up for anything at all. The implications that he is or at least has tricked the scans, a part of the map rather than an entity in his own right. This is concerning, but it does mean that he is mostly inner save for more extreme circumstances. I've heard of this thing, urban legend. Rather he came here, was trapped here, or is merely a manifestation of a real thing, I have no idea. But for the moment, he's not much of an issue. He doesn't show on any scan whatsoever. Invisible, if he ever chose to attack, there'd be no way to detect him of I mean, spe specially designed equipment. Pray it doesn't come to that. The monk stays in his corner. I don't know much about him. But he's the main entity of the dark room thus far. I doubt he's the cause of it, but he certainly so has some significance. Notably, though, he has an existential scam, but no physical. He's a ghost, can't be touched, no hitbox, no nothing. Bullets it won't even enter his skin. Now, this does imply some things about what he is, an illusionist. This doesn't mean that he can't become a threat, but he can be successfully engaged in standard combat. He barely exists with our comprehension of existing. He's a phantom. Those other two are the only scanning anomalies I've seen this far. Everything else has some questionable properties, but it's certainly much more than real than those two. I tried something, and I got something else. Using a few tricks, I froze the suicidal girl in place, careful to specifically not break off her pathfinding, but using a mesmerizing trick to stop her movement entirely. I tried using another trick from that same sleeve to link her health pool to a second civilian, allowing me to kill her without the damage being reflected back to me. My intentions were to kill the suicidal civilian and see if anything notable occurred. It seemed like one of its tests. However, this failed. She could not be linked. Whatever change she undergone made her improvis to this particular spell. I shot the civilian in the head just to get rid of it. Though it sounds grim when I say that out loud, the girl was still frozen from my mesmerizing, and simply said, "What? Well, somebody had the courage to do that, and was burst into electricity before disappearing. That voice line is only linked to the breaking of a bust of brain. 
in the opening of chapter of Half-Life 2. Not a standard voice line for a civilian. She left behind a cone with a light on top. I've heard of this thing. A curse detector, some called it. Intriguing. So firstly, the curse detector is working great. Second, bringing it anywhere near the darkroom causes it to catch fire and fly from my grip into the maw of the darkroom. Followed by a gust of strong wind and a cloud of smoke emerging from the darkroom's entrance. Now that is just childish. The curse detector is safe for the record. Seems to always be here with me when I arrive back. Quite a handy bit of technology and it strongly relates back to the old school Gmod. A light bulb and a traffic cone. I could see this being used by some ghost hunting YouTubers. Discreetly turning it on with numpad 6 and when they entered a spooky part of the map. But it works. It even detected Semper. Check the box for specialized detection equipment. Still need to keep it from flying out of my hands whenever I'm near the door of the dark room. One thing that's notable about this curse detector is that it's a bit finicky. Things is, the dark room permanently breaks lights. All of them. Even have my flashlight flickered once. All I need to start bringing some night vision goggles. Thing is, that applies to the detector as well. If it gets too close, you might as well toss that thing through the front door, because it's worthless. I often do that too. Resets the damn thing. The curse detector isn't a power above the dark room, nor equal. It's absolutely still at mercy. But who made this thing anyway? I found that the large threshold into the garage interacts with props by lighting them on fire and sucking them violently into the dark room. That would explain the odd interaction with the curse detector from entry 16. Notably, this does not apply to vehicles, ragdolls, weapons, and some entities. I noticed something from the fire, though. It goes thanks to another mod of mine that can't be turned off. I can have light, which means with the camera I can examine the dark room remotely with makeshift torches. In testing this, however, something odd happened. The fire started, and as soon as it did it, I heard the sound of rushing water. I removed the fire and listened closely, and it sounded as though it was all underwater. I wasn't but the sounds were as though I were. Stranger and stranger, I found that only the dark room had this ambience. It could be a glitch, but it's so specific that it causes me some slight concern. If I come across this again, I'll be make sure to note it in the future. Something happened. I put a handful of civilians into a room, each with revolvers, I blocked all the exits using the new information I had learned to prevent the dark room from meddling. I confirmed a few things. Any NPC can turn rogue and begin attacking their allies. Notably, no, notably this won't change their targets. and doesn't seem to provoke enemies to, to attack them. As well as it seems that it fades after a moment. However... What was more interesting was the fact that they drew out their weapons when trying to leave the dark room, which they did attempt. Despite the fact that I put up fences that should not have been able to be crossed. One got out. I watched him. He knocked it down. I don't know how. He ran out, turned the corner, and by the time I caught up, he was gone. But to say he was gone would be a lie. He's not. He's still there, but he isn't. He shows up on the scans just like the monk. Nothing physical, but still existent. So, he's entirely invisible to the naked eye, as if he didn't exist at all. He could only be seen on the scans. He's stripped down to a ghost. Thoughts and senses without the ability to move or act. It's a morbid thought, but I've gotten used to seeing men pulled straight through walls. Parts flying down from the ceiling as their blood soaks up into the grass above. I've gotten used to the sounds of fire and screaming coming from down the hall where I was. Certain there was nobody there. 
The feeling of being watched has numbed until it feels like the owner of the house checking on their guests from time to time. The monsters, the freaks, the entities, all of this becomes so second nature. They're not anomalies, they're just different rules of the same game. Yet every so often, something will occur that reminds me of whose halls I walk. I haven't felt unwelcome in this place for quite some time, but, what, but for whatever reason, this place seems to have made me very aware of its impatience. Hardly dead yet, but I'm still testing a few things out. Currently attempting to get a setup where I can remotely view the dark room with civilians, combines, and zombies at once. I've noticed that the dark room appears to respond differently when I am directly in the room, for instance. The monk seems to scare off citizens, prompting them to exit through the tunnels. As well, zombies, Antillians, and Combine are all attracted towards the monk, though this warrants additional testing. There's hardly any hope to kill the monk. Ghosts don't die easy. The most I've found to do so is directly changing the tier, but even then it feels less than a victory and more like the map clearing away its toys to play a new game. I wonder if there's any here willingly. Semper, for instance, doesn't have all of his old tricks, which makes me think that if this was really him, and not a recreation of him by the map, then perhaps it's holding him here. A local point of anomalies, perhaps? Back to my point, though. Termination is not on the books. Not yet. But perhaps there is a way I dare not attempt it. This game that we've played together has a set of rules. A set of rules that doesn't want to be broken. I dare say that the truly attempting to destroy of its toys would set a new tone, and I'd rather not make an enemy of something of this magnitude. To be transparent, I'm not saying that it would be successful. I am saying, however, that if it knew what I attempted, then it may see this as a change in the status quo. It does not want me to treat it as an equal. It wants me to treat it as a puppet master. I allow this and I play along. Doing otherwise may only result in further suffering on my own hands. I am still attempting to complete the task it's set for me, though. The doll in the chair, black grass and construct have that doll, but with some answers present elsewhere. As to its nature, it's mostly glossed over. However, the chair's presence seemed to be implying that it is waiting for something. Destroying the chair, as I have read elsewhere, will result in a sort of wrong answer response. Spawning them, destroying a group of stalkers. I don't know what answers placing the dawn to the chair may give me, but I'm still tensing. Testing. I've kept that doll safely tucked into a place I can grab it without breaking the line of sight with the chair. Someday soon, I'll know. Those stalkers are a curious bunch as well. A night, a non-useless NPC within the standard game. They're very present within this map. One lives over at the submarine bay. They can be spawned by the dark room as they erode other NPCs into them. They both have the capacity to fire lasers, something not seen by their counterparts in the base game, likely a vestige of their use in horror maps, which this place seems to mimic to the best of its ability. This is true, however, circumventing this will consistently lead to the light being broken by the Durkham's anomalous effects, and needing to be broken for replacement. That light is certainly a question, though. Acquiring it seems to be done through a map, as if it was made by the darkroom as a sort of reward. Perhaps getting the doll into the chair will present something similar. Perhaps each anomaly has some answer to it. A brief note before I end off post number 27. Anybody is welcome to share their logs as well. Understanding of this beast cannot be done by a single clown. We're all clowns here. and. All clowns are welcome. I know what I said, but I didn't hold myself to it. This thing is odd, but it knows what its limits are. 
How far it's allowed to act outside of my hand, it will hold some sort of recognition for what it is permitted to attempt, and furthermore what it cannot do. It has not attempted to kill me directly unless I followed along in its games. The barnacles let me go, the fast zombie only runs past, and the pit that leads into the skybox stops short of killing me. The only times it's ever really done that is with the suicide girl, who I've entirely stopped seeing. I'm gonna go try it. Matt be damned. Termination of Entity. The Scientist. Successful screenshot of of the uh, uh, scientist being dead. Termi it's called Termination of Entity. The Scientist Successful. Cheeky one, aren't you? Showing an image of the dark room. Scientist Entity being back. Called Termination Failure Basis. Anomalous Revival. Next post. It can be killed, but not really. They're like dolls. A bit more than I expected, frankly. It can be knocked down, but they can also be picked right up back at the moment's notice. Killing them isn't easy, for the record. Commands won't work. A nuclear warhead won't register. The problem is that they aren't physical. However, a part of the self exists regardless. If you can enter into that part of its existence and meddle with it there, then you can kill them. The monk seems to be a tad different. It can't be directly killed through this exact method, but the thesis should be the same. This method is developed by the is developed from the same method used by the map itself to remove them. It should theoretically work for entity found. The issue is that in this place doesn't care. It does not care about them dying. They can bring me back a new one, just as it does when it wipes the slate clean. Full destruction does not seem possible. I should have seen this coming. I should have seen this coming. Effectively, you aren't putting a bullet in their head. You're emancipating their soul. This will work if you're being attacked directly by any of them, save for Semper. They cannot sustain physical trauma, but the fact that they exist requires them to have some ability to be destroyed just the same. They cannot bleed. However, they were born. They were made. They can be unmade. Simple as a simple does. A more tame entry this time. But I attempted to bring the curse detector through the threshold with the camera attached and night vision active, but it seems to refuse to pull as it did before. Curiously, nothing seems to activate this pull as it did before, though putting a washing machine inside the garage did somehow to be heard as the prop was blasted outward and sucked back in flaming and sparkling, then gone. Seems someone is trying to revive itself. I wonder if it's getting dressed for a new revival. Or a rival. The historian who made this place, Xololo, has made their own archive and seems to have uncovered some new developments. Whether or not they have control on it is another story. At this point, it seems as though the festering darkness has begun to shift on its own. Perhaps something has changed, like an inhale before the wind come, comes. I believe something is on the horizon. Who knows, maybe it's just a tad hurt when I called it childish. That was another rude of me. After all... The nerve! After I apologized, it pulled the fizz gun straight from my hand and tried to dissolve it. This poking and prodding we do to another. I knocked one of its toys down, now it knocks mine straight from my hand. How we claw and scrape at one another. How we test and meddle. My old friend. My old rival. What are you? More unwanted questions. A light appeared in the dark room from the monk's corner casting along the wall. This light doesn't appear to have an actual light source. 
or rather a light texture. I'm uncertain what to make of this. Notably, I was moving all the props inside the doll's room into the dark room when this occurred. Might have just been an error, but something feels weird about this one. It's not a bug. Maybe the light is off, but this is not a bug. I tried to get closer, stand on top of it, I stood the doll on top of it, just out of curiosity, but once I stood on it, it was gone. But that's not entirely true. The light was gone because I was on the opposite corner of the dark room. Running into that opposite corner seems to have the same effect, teleporting me into the light on the other side. I'm not certain if this was meant to occur the way it did, but I also saw the monk standing with, with his light beneath him. I previously attempted to teleport myself into the monk when he was there and attack him just to try and see what he might do. Was this another reward, like the curse detector? I don't know. Seems there's more here that I haven't seen yet. Deeper we go. I reported this new sighting to the events listing discussion. From what I could tell, they simply wished to catalog all the events. However, there was one lad who said something. He did some prodding with NPCs and turrets, which may be a good idea to set up in the future. I have a few drones kicking around. He also mentioned something occurring with his unit, ATCU Marine specifically, on the roof of a tall building, which I intend to figure out precisely what he had meant. But he said something very odd and specific. He mentioned vehicles being pulled into the dark room, which I still have yet to see. But he put forth that it was a possible method of feeding. I haven't quite thought of this yet. Quite an interesting concept. Perhaps it needs to be fed before producing certain results? I've noticed that it felt more active after pulling props into the dark room. Worth a test, if nothing else. Rather curious development as far as the teleportation trick goes. Restarting the map seems to have removed the light. Though the teleportation trick still functions, facing the corner and walking into its place places me in the same position on the opposite corner of the room. I'm curious if this was present before. I never would have run into it, after all. Certainly tried if you can, dear reader. If nothing else, it proves a handy trick to get within spinning distance of the monk. I haven't tested out the radio yet. But the stalker always spawns, at least in my experience testing in tier 4. Just the same, the curse detector will always spawn to your left after you've discovered it. The chair isn't meant to be destroyed either. It seems that's a failure condition, actually. There's something you need to do with it for my investigation. Not just destroy it. My current hypothesis is the doll. It seems to fit too well into the situation. I'll see what can be done with that radio, though. I've heard murmurs about its purpose elsewhere, but a cursory glance seems to have rather illuminating, but more on that later. I've never heard of the Darkroom Haunting, your ability to use left would click. While it is definitely childish to hate to its limit inside it, it wants to toy with you, like it's playing a game. It would never stop you, though. I feel that's unrelated. The curse detector can be permanently unlocked by completing the suicidal girl event. My experience with stopping her was a mesmerized spell and killing the civilian next to her. My understanding is that you can only that you all you you just need to stop her. Props should do fine. That being said, I doubt a dupe of the curse detector would work. I seem to recall a similar tagline prison when killed by the suicide event. Likely this has to do with the link and more to do with the development of the map itself. Not anomalies, but notable. Maybe worthwhile to keep out for anything with the GM13 tag. Something's off. I could have sworn others had spoken to me, but now nothing. Strange. I was for a moment content to sit back and let those new faces take up the reins, but I suppose figments are only figments. 
back into the fire we go. But the stranger part is that this place seems to have opened itself up. Like, really opened itself up in smaller ways than expected. But in the same breath, in such more detail than I expected. Small answers to small questions, maybe, but I can't help but feel that there's more. I can see it, I think. The console has answers, but I don't quite grasp them yet. Perhaps this place has opened itself up to me. Perhaps its tricks are on full di display to me now? I can't say! What I can do on the other side is that these things are, have been holding back. But somehow, some ways can be switched on. Answers, secrets, horrors. I don't know. But I want to. Well, whatever those voices had told me apparently are all lies. The chair, the doll, something happened, it really happened. The chair didn't point to me. I heard others say it did, but it didn't. I brought the doll just as always and for once saw the chair. But the thing is that I tried to move the doll left and right. And then the chair followed. Like it knew? Can it hear me? Can it see me here? Is this place not safe? Did others really speak to me? And this place silence them? Did I imagine them? Was I speaking to myself? It happened. The chair, the doll. Was it always this way? Certainly not. Something happened. I felt like it was bursting from my chest or bursting inward. I don't have the words to speak them, but it happened. Seems Semper has some new tricks as well. I tried to walk closer to him, but suddenly we were elsewhere? The surface still, but both of us were now beside the pool. I tried to walk back, but suddenly we appeared somewhere else once more. Strange fellow he is. More than this, I noticed that there was actually three of them. Odd as it sounds, one at each place I was brought. I'm not certain if this is just Semper himself doing, or this, or if this is something to do with that chair again. I'll try investigating. I've heard that other folk mirroring the, uh, the vent drawings. The vent drawings. The map appears to refer to this as the Oracle. The picture, however, I recognize. Red hash lines re represent brickwork, a shadowy stick figure standing in the shadows, and the shadow of a man left to his wall. This is the entrance to the dark room. From the garage beyond that, I've made aware of a massive version of the dark room, simply called Big Dark by the map. It has something of a show to be displayed, and I seem to recall vaguely some hints about a dancing figure with brickwork behind him being hinted at. The doll hasn't reappeared either. Whispering from this place, I hear that I am asked to open the portal. I'm not sure if this is if this has been done or is yet to be done. It's begun to speak to me. In its way. I imagine others could read what it has to say as well. Should it, should they know the right questions to ask? For now, my eyes are set on that damn radio. But that lanky fellow down by the waterfront seems to have hightailed it. I have to inquire about him further. Well, not a dead end, but not an answer either. Firstly, I was only able to find one other scorch mark, and it wasn't more conclusive than the first. However, notably when I brought it to the dark room and it made the exact same sound, those spots, are they, are they new dark rooms? Are they simply a touch of the same darkness? I'll need to investigate further. More importantly, I brought the... Uh, oracle to... I brought the radio to the oracle. This picture is different. It shows construct as we know, but beneath the dark room it shows a great big pit stretching downward. Much the same that was the, that was seen by the doll in the chair, it shows a massive area below and it says, I need it? This oracle 
I can't say I understand them, but they seem interested in this big dark, or whatever you'd like to call it. Perhaps other artifacts may provide further answers? As stated within Log 48, access to tiers above tier 1 have been blocked out. In all of my testing, I've never been able to discover the ability to access them since that point. It seems that it doesn't enjoy being meddled with, as I had done. This is the end of the clown's post. This last post was made in November 11th, 2021, posted on 11.39 p.m. Eastern Time for me. This took, like, an hour and 30 minutes to record. There were so many times that I had said things wrong that I literally just stopped cutting them out and pausing Audacity and re-recording it. This took so long. Also, I'm sorry for not uploading much like I said I would, but I've been investigating some things on this Jam Construct 13 beta map. Hopefully, when there's no, when there's more stuff, I will make a new video on it. But as of now, I've access to, I have access to everything in the map. So, there's nothing new for it, at least to me. I'll see you later. Make sure to subscribe or else I'll kill you.